Hey Curious Kids, Kevin here. Welcome to A Place Called Space. So today we're going to have a history lesson. It's a space history lesson. So we're going to learn all about the history of NASA. So as you can see, I'm a little nasa out today. I got, this is a glow-in-the-dark t-shirt. So if we turn off the lights, it would glow. I got a NASA jacket, it says NASA. Here, here, I got stuff everywhere. Go around the back, it says NASA on there too. So, I'm super excited to tell you about how NASA got started. Like, what was in the beginning? What was it doing? Was there something before NASA that turned into NASA? Yes. So we're gonna learn about that. Learn about the different NASA logos, so the things that say NASA, that represent what it is as a company, as a brand, as an organization. Figure out some of the biggest projects that we've seen with NASA over the years. And then where's it going? So that's what we're going to dive into today. And I would like you to get a piece of paper and a pencil because we are going to write a couple things down. I want you to know what NASA actually stands for. If you have a guess, so let's do that first. So take out your piece of paper and a pencil, write down N-A-S-A, -A, NASA. And what do you think the N stands for? What do you think the A stands for? The S and the A, NASA. What do you think those words are? So I'm gonna give you a couple moments to write that down, especially everyone in Milton, Ontario with Miss Malley's class. You guys are tuning in, thank you for watching again. Guys and girls, everybody, Appreciate you being here to learn about space. So, first up, we are going to be talking about the history of NASA. Okay, so NASA, write it down. What do you think it is? Pen and paper. And I'm not going to give you the answer just yet. Not yet. We got to start somewhere else. So, first off, we got this. What is that? That's, that's not NASA. That says N-A-C-A. Why? Well, what does it stand for? Well, first off, so this was before NASA, long, long time ago. So over, I think it's 105 years. It was in 1915. So 105 years ago. Oh, and tuning in from Wyoming, welcome as well. So if you're just tuning in, Mr. and uh, Mrs. Wyoming, wherever you're coming from, piece of paper and a pen, because we're going to be writing down some stuff. And first off, I want you to guess what does NASA stand for? So before NASA was this, N-A-C-A. You might want to call it NACA, but they didn't call it NACA. They said NACA. Now, what does it stand for? So this is where baby Kevin's going to come in. Hello. And big Kevin's going to go away because where I'm going to write this down for you. Got to move my, my fun stuff out of the way. Where am I putting it? Here we go. So we're going to take the, the black pen here. Move my eraser out of the way just so we can get more writing room. So I'm going to start up on the top here. So we've got NACA. So the NACA stands for, well, actually, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to write NACA. Remember, i got to turn you so you can see me, sorry, as I'm writing. Got to make sure we're all one happy family here. So NACA, I'm going to put some periods there. So that stands for the National, and this is one of the things I want you to write down. So the National Advisory. National Advisory, I'm going to go to the second line here, Committee, if you've heard that word before. It's like a group of people who get to decide things. Committee, and then for, not the letter, F-O-R, for Aeronautics. Aeronautics. I'm running out of room for my hand. I know it's a little bit small, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Can you zoom in for us? Bear with me. Got to make sure it doesn't cut off too much. Almost. We're almost there. Come on. See, it's fun. We're playing games. There it is. Boom. Okay, so NACA was the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. So this was before NASA. So this was way back 105 years ago. That's so old. That's like more than three of me and a whole bunch more of you. Maybe like 10 of you. If you're 10 years old, it's more than 10 of you. It's 10 times 10 is 100. Math. See, math, history, space, we're doing it all today. <laughs> so this was established during World War I. So World War I was where there was a bunch of countries throughout the world they were fighting. 
And the United States was like, hmm, we need something to help us out in our war efforts. So we need something to help us out with the, the planes or anything that's flying in the sky, anything to do with aeronautics. So help us out. And the United States was like, okay, so we got this NACA thing that'll start doing things. Now, this was way back when, right, 105 years ago, but they didn't start doing anything with rockets until about 30 years later. So I'm going to write those down just so we have it. So this was started in 1905, but then they didn't do, I got to draw this. So don't make fun of my rocket. It's my rocket. It's a really tiny, weird rocket. So they didn't do rockets until about 30 years later, or actually about 40 years later, I think it was. It was, uh, it was 1946 is when they started doing rocket stuff. Okay, but still, NASA isn't around yet. We're still working with, point up, NACA, what's above my head right here, NACA. Keep wanting to say NACA, but that's not how they pronounced it. We make mistakes, it's cool. So, they did rockets about 40 years later. So in 1946, we started working with like rocket planes, right? That's a plane, you got my plane. But instead of like these engines, specifically they like put a rocket underneath it. We're like, can we make rocket planes we can go up, go faster, fly these planes around? Hmm? All right, so working with the rocket planes. Oh, stuff's falling over, sorry. All right, so what they were trying to do was have the, the, the supervision, supervision, so looking at and figuring out the problems with flight. So there were problems with flight with airplanes flying around or anything flying, and NACA was supposed to help with those problems. Now, so we've talked, if you've been at a place called space before, we've talked about the first satellite ever. Do you remember what that is? Okay, if you don't, don't worry, I got it right here. So Sputnik, all right, I'm gonna write down Sputnik over here. So we had, so we had Sputnik. So Sputnik was not from the United States, so this was from the Soviet Union, is what it was called at the time, but it's Russia. So it was Russia. All right. So Russia launched Sputnik. And what year was that? Anyone know? I know it's it's hard to remember all this stuff. So I even write it down. So I've got a, I, I know this one. It's 1957. All right. Is when Russia launched the first satellite into space. And then the United States was like, oh, oh no. Like we got to do something because we need to put stuff in space too, and we're kind of scared. So the United States was scared, essentially, and they're like, okay, now we need, we need to really focus on space. So then what happened? NASA. So I'm gonna write down NASA. N-A-S-A. -S -A. So in the beginning, it was the same thing as N-A-C-A. -A. They're like, okay, we're gonna call it N-A-S-A. So it took a couple of years before people actually started calling it NASA. For a while, it's just NASA, right? But NASA sounds so much cooler and it's easier to say. And this was in, I'm going to put the year underneath it before I tell you what it is, 1958, right? So one year after the Sputnik. But I want to also tell you that it was July 29th. So July 29th, 1958. And I want to tell you that because the birthday's coming up, right? So it's May now, next comes June, and then July. So we got NASA's 62nd birthday coming up, right? Let's do the math right. Did we get the, the six, carry the two, and the four? 62nd birthday coming up. Okay, now NASA, what does it stand for? Now we get to check to see if what you wrote down before is right. NASA stands for, the N is for National, National, then we got the A is Aeronautics, so National Aeronautics, and just a small and because we don't use that A. Oh, my A and, and T look bad in National, we're going to fix that. Work on your penmanship. Na, Sean, National. That looks better. National Aeronautics and what's the S? Space. Space and then A. Um, agency? 
advisory, association, nope, administration. So the last A is administration. So write this down if you didn't get it right the first time. If you did get it right the first time, let me know in the comments below or let me know if you got a question about any of this stuff. Type it in, it's either below or to the side, however you're watching this, and I can answer those questions. So did you get it right? So we got the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is what NASA stands for. And that was about almost 62 years ago after Sputnik, this satellite, first one ever launched by Russia, then the United States was like, okay, we gotta do this, let's get NASA going. So what happened? Well, I need a different marker here. Purple. So in 1958, when NASA started, NACA went away, and everyone that worked at NACA came down here. You can kind of see that arrow. I mean, just a little bit. There we go. Everyone that was working at NACA now became a part of NASA. So no more NACA, now it's all NASA, now it's NASA. Okay, so now we got NASA, and then we have this. So this is the first one, so this is called the NASA seal. See how it says National, gotta start on the side, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and then USA right here, the bottom middle. So this was the NASA seal, we call it the NASA insignia, and this is the first one that came out of like, hey, here's NASA's logo. It's pretty cool looking, right? But I don't have that on my coat. We got other ones to talk about. So let me get a little bit organized here. I'm gonna take a drink of water too. Make sure you stay hydrated. It's good to be healthy. It helps your brain so you can think and speak clearly. Okay, so we've got NASA in 1958, and actually, so, you've seen this logo before maybe? Let me put it down here. So this, see how does it look? Here we go, see how it says JPL? So JPL is where I used to work, that is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and that was actually, it's moving. There we go. So the, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, was actually around before NASA. It was part of Caltech. So Caltech is the California Institute of Technology. It's a college here in California, right outside Los Angeles in Pasadena. And it was one of the labs that was testing rockets. So they had scientists you know, working and engineers trying to figure out rocket science. And then once NASA got established, they're like, JPL, you, you, you look really cool. We want you. So then NASA took JPL and made JPL part of NASA. Now, if you're wondering why I have the JPL logo on peanuts, there's a whole story about it, and maybe I'm going to do an episode about why there's lucky peanuts, that's what we call them for JPL, where we eat them during very, very special times with missions and stuff. Maybe in the future, we're going to talk about the lucky peanuts. So JPL was around before, and then NASA took JPL. So, so JPL, I'm going to write this, before NASA... and then joined NASA. And then joined NASA. Okay, cool. So, GPL, well, I'm gonna put the, the date. So there's a lot of numbers in this one. This is why I wanted you to kind of write some stuff down to maybe help you out to understand like the timeline. So, we got 1905 up here, 1946. So actually in between here, GPL, little arrow, was 1936. So JPL has been along for a really long time trying to figure out rockets, and they did. They successfully figured out rockets. They helped launch the first satellite from the United States into space, Explorer 1. So JPL has been doing some really cool things. Okay, so we got NACA, then Sputnik launch, then NASA came to be, and then NASA was like, JPL, come and be a part of me. Okay? So that's kind of like the timeline. So we've got 1958, we got NASA. Also, then this happened. So here we go, got right here. So in night and here, this is the, the different colored one, glow in the dark. So in 1958 is when NASA also made this logo. And they're like, we like this. 
So we call this the meatball. Isn't that kind of cool? The meatball. So I'm going to write that in purple. Just so you know exactly what I'm saying. It is, oh, if I could work on my penmanship. Come on, Kevin. Meat. Meatballs, spaghetti and meatballs, is what we call this logo. So just so you know which one that is, we'll draw the circle. We'll write NASA. And then we got, we got this. So what are the different parts of this logo, right? So we got the big blue ball, which is like Earth, right? And then the red thing, you know, I can point it on here. Like I like to point, but I can't point here because it's, it's a picture that I put up there. So we got the blue ball of like Earth. Let me make sure you can see this well. Cool. Blue ball of like Earth, right? And then this red is like for an airplane. It's like a wing, like the, kind of like the shape of an airplane. So it's kind of like, oh wait, I gotta point it this way. It's kind of, see how it's kind of like that? It's like the front of the, 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 the plane or the wing, like an aileron, if you've heard that word. So that's what that is because NASA, one of the big things that came out of it was, you know, those problems in flight. And that's what the red thing is. Then we get the, the stars all over, right? Because space. And then we get the, the orbiting. So the, the white thing is showing something in orbit. You can see there, like tracing its path. So that's the NASA logo. And that was used from 1959. So we'll put dates here. 1959 till 1975. Okay. Now... Before I jump into like a change of a logo, because you see, see this one here, I do want to tell you that there, there's four areas that like NASA focuses on, right? Because NASA is supposed to do space research, aeronautics research, and civil, civilian, so like non-government people, space programs. But there are four areas that NASA really focuses on. So I want to write those down below here so we can see that. Give myself some more room. So there's four big areas that we do research in. All right. <laughs> Wait, aren't you on American Ninja Warrior from Unknown Anonymous? Yes, I am. I am known as the Rocket Man or Rocket Ninja, NASA Ninja, all that stuff. If you didn't know, yes, I do compete on American Ninja Warrior. I did that for two years, and now I work with the TV show um, helping test out the obstacles. So we come up with the new ideas. Like, Kevin, jump on here and, and let me know if you can do it. <laughs> That's a spacey meatball. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Um, I know anonymous. Yes, I was on it. And then Glenn asks, uh, will NASA go away now that they're a SpaceX? And I'm going to talk about that at the end, um, like where NASA's going. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on that question, Glenn, but thank you for asking. So we got the four areas of research for NASA. So the first one, right, is, I'm going to give you a hint. What's this? <laughs> Earth. So the first area is Earth, Earth science. Because we're trying to study our home planet and learn a whole lot more of what's going on, what happened in the past, and what's gonna be going on in the future. So we study Earth science, very important. Number two, I'm gonna give you another hint. Ah, oh, what's this? Sun, right? And then what is the the, 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 the mythical creature, the mythical god that we named the sun after, Helios. So we call that heliophysics. That's a bigger word. So heliophysics is like studying the sun and learning about how it interacts with Earth and how it interacts with everything else in the solar system. So learning about our sun and how that impacts us. So number three, the third one here, no, it's not Mars specifically, but it is planetary sciences. So learning about the planets, right? So planets, planet, Terry, sciences. Okay, so we're learning about planets, we're learning about moons in our solar system and in other solar systems, other places outside away from our sun, the star closest to us. There's exoplanets, exomoons, and that's all in planetary sciences. Okay, and then the fourth one, last one, this one is another big word. It is astro 
physics. That's an R. Astrophysics. So astrophysics is studying the stuff beyond, you know, like our solar system. How do the different stars and galaxies and black holes and nebulas move? Like what's going on out there? The Big Bang. Yes, Wes, I said the Big Bang. Wes is from Texas, and he's been asking questions about the Big Bang. Don't worry, we're going to do an episode on that. I'm not sure if it's next week. I got Tuesday, maybe Thursday uh, next week or the week after. Um, so it's coming. We'll learn all about the Big Bang. Uh, you know, what's going on? Is the universe expanding? It's getting bigger? That's astrophysics. So those are the four different areas of research within NASA. Like that's what we're, we're looking at. And I see that Glenn asked a question is, uh, what area did I work in when I was at NASA? So all of them, actually. So my job as an engineer, as a rocket scientist, was to build these spaceships, design them to study Earth, to study the sun, to study planets, and then to study deep things out in uh, the galaxy and the universe beyond where we're at. So I was able to do all of them, which is, is pretty cool. I didn't, I got to learn so many cool things. There's so much stuff to learn out there. So great question. And then I did systems engineering. Yes, so systems engineering was the official title. Another unknown anonymous, who are you? Drop your name. I'm curious. You know so much about me with American Ninja Warrior and systems engineering. So thank you for tuning in. Okay. So that's what we talk, we're, we're talking about, history of NASA. So that's what NASA does. Now, let's go back, because we see it's on this side. Keep pointing to the wrong side. Now there's this. So we call this the worm. All right. So we got the, the meatball logo, right? Next, we had the worm. So worm. Draw a line here. Worm. Obviously, it's like, ooh, nah. Uh, hard for me to write like that. All right, so we use the worm. So we changed to that in 1975 to 1992. You might be thinking, you're like, but well, we use this one now, right? Yeah, because after 1992, we decided to go back to the meatball. Back to the meatball. All right, boom, back to the meatball in 1992 to now. So we're still using the meatball, right? So the worm went away, using the meatball, but we're like, I love the worm. I think it looks really cool, it's an interesting design. So then NASA's like, okay, let's use both of them. That, no. <laughs> so that is not a real NASA logo. Somebody put that one together, combine the two. So now, okay, let, let's look at it one more time because that's cool. Yeah. So we use both of them now. So the main logo is the meatball. The secondary logo is the worm. All right, the worm. So we use both of them, and the, the worm just came back this year in 2020. All right, brand new, because people were like, hey, this is really cool. Let's bring it back. So that's what's going on. Now, so let's recap that really quick. Dropping stuff. <gasps> it's okay. So we had that insignia we saw before. Let me jump back to show it. Boop, boop, boop. Let's go through. So we had the insignia that started in 1958. Then we moved to the meatball in 1959 to 1975. Then we jumped over to the worm from 1975 to 1992. And then we went back to the meatball from 92, 1992. So uh, 18 years ago, right? Until Well, not 18. Kevin, do your math. That's 28 years ago. 28 years ago to now, now we use them both. No, this just looks really cool, but I would love like a jacket or a shirt or something that's got this on it or a hat. That could be cool. We use both of these now. So it's the main meatball and the, the worm logo. And oh, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. That's coming up next. So that's where the logos are. So the, some of the biggest projects that NASA worked on is we're going to bring Big Kevin back. Whoa, Kevin and Kevin. So many Kevins. Don't worry, just changing the setup. Nope, that stays. This goes away. There we go. So I need to scoot you back over. Okie dokie. So some of the biggest projects, right, that NASA worked on that you've heard of. So we got the Apollo moon missions. So like landing on the moon. Landing on the moon. We did that in 1959, 1969. See, so many, so many dates. That's why you got to write them all down. 
1969, we landed on the moon. Then the next one I want to show you is what jumped up before. So this is Sky Lab. All right, so this is a space station. Before the International Space Station, which we'll talk about in a second, this was the Sky Lab space station. I think it operated for like 20 some weeks, like 24 weeks or something like that, up in space. And you know, you could, astronauts were, were hanging out in there and doing experiments and stuff. All right, so then another big mission that we've done that you know about, Space Shuttle. So we learned about the Space Shuttle like last week or the week before. Quarantine's got my time all crazy. But we learned the Space Shuttle is a big project from NASA. After that, spinning all around. International Space Station is a huge project from NASA that a lot of people know about. That's a nice big one. Obviously astronauts, because people are going into space. Put that right back up there, my little astronaut friend. Now, I need to bring this back because NASA's working on some new stuff. So, let's show you the next thing that they're working on. So this right here is the Orion capsule. So, when we went to the moon, we used capsules, and then we used things that look kind of like a plane with a space shuttle, and now NASA's building this new capsule, this one here, to go to, the, like, go to Mars, right? Go to the moon and beyond. So when we're talking about people walking on the moon, again, because we haven't done that in a long time, or going to have those first footprints on Mars, we're going to be using Orion, and that's going to launch on this. So this is the space launch system. This is a... a drawing. It's not real yet, so they're still building this. It's going to be so powerful to bring us to the moon and all the way out to Mars with humans. Space launch system, SLS. So we're building that. And then this is the, the question that Glenn was asking was, is NASA going away because of SpaceX? So here is commercial crew. So this is where NASA is working with, you see SpaceX here and then Boeing on this side to bring astronauts back into outer space from American soil. Because we stopped doing that with the space shuttle in 2011. It's been a long time. It's been nine years since we've launched astronauts from the United States. We were paying Russia some money and be like, hey, can we, can we use your rocket, please? And they're like, yeah, just give us a bunch of money. So we gave Russia a bunch of money. We used their rockets. Now we're going to use rockets here in America, built by American companies, to bring our astronauts into outer space. And that's so cool. So right here, SpaceX. Rockets over here. SpaceX rocket with a crewed dragon, so they have a capsule. You can see the capsule is right there. And there's gonna be two astronauts launching in here next week. Next week, Wednesday, May 27th. And so Tuesday's episode is gonna be all about the commercial crew program with the crew dragon with astronauts launching from Florida now for the first time since 2011 to get into outer space. So NASA is not going to be going away with SpaceX and with Boeing, they're going to be working together to, to push space technology forward. So NASA's never going away. We need it. So what SpaceX and Boeing does, they make money by doing their stuff, right? NASA doesn't make money. We don't sell stuff. Like we work on uh, taxpayer dollars, right? So what we do is we develop new technologies. We have research. So we're not focused on just making something to make money. We're doing it for the love of science, for those those research things that we saw before, right? The earth science, heliophysics, planetary sciences, and astrophysics. Now I see another question uh, from Stan. It's hard to choose which one is cooler, the meatball or the worm. Well, yeah, that's why we just gotta do both of them, Stan. Totally cool. And then you just watched the ISS go over a few times this week, very cool. So there's this thing called ISS Above. It's the International Space Station. You can see this. You can see the International Space Station go across the night sky and it just looks like a star that's moving. So ISS above is a way to tell you when you can look up and see the International Space Station. Really cool. Thank you for sharing that, Stan. All right, that is NASA. I'm going to just really quickly bring this back up so we can look at this part really quick. So we had, let's do this. Oh, that's in the way. It's in the way. So we started with, with NACA, the National Advisory Council for Aeronautics, over 100 years ago in 1905. And then Sputnik launched. And then NASA, or the United States was like, we need space. So then the United States created NASA, the National, Administ National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And they took JPL in 
and then we used the meatball logo, went to the worm, back to the meatball, and now we're using both of them, and we concentrate on earth science, heliophysics, planetary sciences, and astrophysics. All of those really amazing things is what NASA does. That's why I'm all NASA does. So hopefully you learned a lot in this episode of A Place Called Space, the history of NASA. Click that thumbs up to let me know you like this episode. And if you're a fan of A Place Called Space and you haven't done it yet, click that subscribe button to, low to let me know you're a fan. You're going to be coming back for more episodes to learn all about things outer space. Because, yeah, come back uh, Tuesday. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. And on Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, Kevin at 11 in Central Time in Texas and Wisconsin and everybody else, we're going to be learning about the commercial crew, the launch that's happening on Wednesday with the SpaceX rocket. And uh, from Ontario, can we watch the, the launch live on Wednesday? Yes. So NASA TV is going to have that. If you go to like the NASA.gov, look up NASA TV, they're going to be streaming it online as well as SpaceX. So if you go to any of the social media platforms, day of, there will be a link there with a live viewing of the rocket launch. I'm so excited to watch it and hope you can watch it too. And then we'll talk about it on a Tuesday before it happens and touch on it just a little bit briefly on Thursday for our next lesson. So everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday. And remember, never stop learning. Take care, everyone.